Today we're going to be talking about solving logarithmic equations. And here are some key things that I want to make sure you guys write down for solving logarithmic equations. The bases of the law of the logs are the same, set the insides equal. And we'll do a bunch of examples of that so you guys can see what that means. If there's only one log function or some log functions equal to a number, combine into one log and write as an exponential. And again, we're going to do an example of that so that you guys can see what that looks like. And then this is key. Make sure that you are checking for extraneous solutions, meaning the inside of the log can't be less than or equal to zero. When I'm talking about the inside of the log, I'm talking about the piece that's in here, that 2x plus 1. That piece cannot be negative or equal to zero. And that goes back to the domain restriction we had on logarithms. Okay, so our first example. Hey, okay, notice how we have a logarithm equal to a number. So if you have just one logarithm or a bunch of logarithms equal to a number, write it as an exponential. Remember, logs and exponentials are kind of undo each other. They're inverses of each other. So we're writing this as an exponential, 6 to the negative 1 equals 2x minus 1. So 6 to the negative 1 equals 2x minus 1. So that means that 1 sixth is equal to 2x minus 1. Add 1 over, we get 7 sixth is equal to 2x. Divide by 2, or multiplying by 1 half, gets me x equal to 7 over 12. Now you want to make sure you check that answer. So plug that answer back in. Log base 6 of 2x So simplifying this, we get log base 6 of 7 sixths minus 1 equals negative 1, or log base 6 of 1 sixth equals negative 1. That works, because 6 to the negative 1 power is equal to 1 sixth. So this is our answer. We had no extraneous solutions. Now here we have to use our properties, okay? We have x to the fourth power. We can bring that fourth power down in front. That makes our life a lot easier. So we end up with that. Now when we divide by 4, we have a lot smaller number on the other side. So now I have 5 to the second power is equal to x, and that's going to be 25. Okay, when I plug 25 back in, that ends up working. Um, so our answer is 25, and it doesn't make our logarithm negative, so no extraneous solutions. Now this is that first step. If the bases of the logs are the same, set the insides equal. What I meant by that, if you have a log on one side and a log on the other, and just one log, one log, set the insides equal. So set x squared equal to negative 6x minus 8. Now remember with quadratics, get everything over to one side. Now try and factor. And I'll tell you right now, with these logarithm equations, these answers are always going to factor. So I have a 8, two things that multiply to be 8, add to be 6, positive 4, positive 2. Set each one of those factors equal. We get negative 4 and negative 2. Now remember, the insides can't be negative. The answers could possibly be negative. So let's do a quick check. Let's check negative 4. Okay. 
Okay, so negative 4 squared, negative 4 squared is 16. So my inside didn't end up being negative because of that squared. Now I have a 24 minus an 8, that is also 16. So negative 4 works out. Real quick, let's check negative 2. So negative 2 squared is 4. I have a 12 minus an 8. That is also equal to 4. So both our answers work. So your answers can be negative, but if you make those insides negative, that's when you wouldn't have a solution. Okay, again, you have a log on one side, log on the other side. Set the insides equal, so x plus 4 is equal to 3x. I'm going to subtract the x over to get 2x. x is equal to 2. Now you could just do a quick check here. When I plug in 2, we get a 6 on the left, and we get 6 on the right. So that works. We had no negatives. That was a super easy one. Okay, now this one. We have multiple logarithms. That's why we learned those properties, okay? When you have multiple logarithms, you can't, you have to combine the logarithms into one thing. So first you need to use that property of bringing the 4 up and making it an exponent. Now remember our log property. When you're subtracting, we divide. So now, since you have a log equals a log, set your insides equal. Multiply both sides by 5. Now the fourth root of 625 would be 5. Now just do a quick check with your original. Does your original make sense? Or does it make, does this answer make this inside, really, because that's the only variable, negative? It doesn't, so that's our answer. Okay, now I have logs on one side equals a number. So eventually we need to write as an exponential. We can't write it as an exponential until we combine these logs into one logarithm. Remember your log property that when you're adding, we multiply. So it's really x times x plus 1 equals 1. So I have in there, when I multiply that out, x squared plus x. Now again, how I break these x's out of the logarithm is writing as an exponential. So 12 to the first equals x squared plus x. Bring that 12 over to the other side because we want to get, we want to be able to factor. Now try and factor two things that multiply to be a negative 12, but are going to add to be a positive 1. That's a positive 4 and a negative 3, so we have negative 4 and 3. Now again, check to make sure your answers don't make the insides negative. If you look at this negative 4 right now, when you plug in the negative 4 for x, that's going to make that x negative. Not the simplified version, the original. Keep that in mind, the original. So negative 4 ends up being an extraneous solution. When I plug in 3, that makes sense, so our only answer is 3. Okay, there are your three lesson questions. Please make sure those are submitted.
on time.